Hi there, um, this is your daily briefing. Um, slight plot twist or location twist. Um, I'm now in a lounge. Um, the lighting in my office is shocking. So um, until I can steal a street lamp from somewhere, um, we might do a little bit of a tour. Uh, I was planning to go outside in um, the garden, which is a, a handy par two, um, but the wind was just like, and doesn't work. So anyway, right. Um, Leicester City. I think the most important thing we can get from today um, would be a good, one of those good wry um, songs from the opposing fans um, about Harry Kane. And if they could come up with something, um, that, would, that, would, that would lift my mood um, going into this. There are three teams beneath us that can affect, because this is all about the Europa um, League, Champions League gone obviously and interestingly enough Leicester City are, are despite having been in the top uh, places, top four, top five or whatever it is for 30 game weeks or something ridiculous they're suddenly no longer guaranteed Champions League football so this this is not a dead rubber for them um, and that that, that is reflected in my prediction, which we'll come to, which I'm sure you're all on tenterhooks. Um, so there's three teams beneath us, um, Everton, Arsenal, Leeds. And as far as I see it, as things kind of the overview, is that if we win and other results are favourable, we could still get Europa football, Europa League. And if we remain where we are, which is in seventh spot, it's the Europa or European Conference League, which, as I've hinted at, is a world of pain. And you'll just have to trust me. Um, you, you wait till you see some of the rubbish that show, uh, shows up in that. Um, Everton are playing Manchester City at Goodison. Arsenal at home to Brighton and Leeds at home to West Brom. So who knows? Who knows? Um, I I would where I'd like this to go is I'd like Spurs to finish in seventh. I'd like Spurs to get the European Europe European Conference League in order to expose us for what we are. Um, and the more pressure on the next manager, the better. I have totally run out of sympathy. Um, not that I had much in the first instance with um, Enoch and the whole operation. The whole thing is, is, is scandalous. It's not just shambolic, it's also scandalous. And the only way, and I know my voice is going to be ignored by lots of people, but that's okay, I'm used to it. I've had many, many years of it. Um, the only way that pressure is going to result in anything precipitating into change, meaningful change for the football club, is if the club feels like it does this week all of the time. So forget about getting onto the board, forget about making bureaucratic noises. You're not gonna get anywhere. What you need is to keep up the misery of your existence, of their existence. And so overstretching a tired, disinterested, too big for its boots squad um, is, is absolutely the way forward, in my opinion. Um, and it's only when we hit, it's difficult to say when that point would be, but hit a point of critical mass whereby Levy just turns around and says, I am, I'm cornered, I just don't have anywhere else to go. And that's when maybe, hopefully, something might happen. Because that's the point where Joe Lewis can no longer ignore or no longer ride it out. Um, I really don't want to talk about Harry Kane, but I've got some notes here. Um, there's some really weird stuff going on in the mainstream media, and it's not like they've they picked a side. Um, it, it's it's as if that. Do you know? I don't even know how to how to communicate it to you. People have decided that um, modern slavery acts don't exist. And that footballers are essentially the same as uh, racehorses. So, you know, whether the, you, you can just trade them or you can refuse to trade them. It's really peculiar. And we've got chances writing for The Athletic, 
um, and just chances generally. I think we're going to get a lot of this from the pundits. I'm not sure who's who's uh, broadcasting this game. Um, but all this business of Harry Kane's three years on his contract being against him. These contracts are insurance buffers. They're a safety net for clubs. So if players do want to go, it means that, you know, if the, their head is turned, to use that language, then you're not left with like the, the minimum amount of money. And this, this, was, this, was, this takes us back to the whole Enoch uh, way of operating um, with the compulsory purchase orders. There you go, mate. We've come for your business. There's the market rate. No consideration for anything else. It's that, you know, just horrible. So this is to prevent, <laughs> ironically, to prevent the way that, that Enoch behaved with local businesses happening to them in respect of players. Which is why, if you go through the list, and I'm not going to bore you with it, there's some dross on there um, that's going to be around for the next three, four, five years. So, but this narrative that Kane is disruptive, Kane is selfish, Kane is trapped, it's all of his own making, the club holds the, the initiative, holds the advantage. This, this entire narrative is basically saying that Harry Kane isn't very bright and he ought to do what he's told. So, um, depending on, on um, uh, how the rest of the day pans out for me personally, I might be back or I might not be. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I, hope, I hope we lose. Um, I think we probably will lose. I know it's some people are going to be absolutely revolted by me saying that. But I see no benefit. Every time there is a little bit of positivity on the pitch, it's against a rubbish side and we're fed this thing of, oh, Bale is back. Deli Alley, yeah, told you he was going to come good. And it, it, it perpetuates the nonsense. And let's not do that. Let's, let's not perpetuate the nonsense. Um, so, yeah, Spurs to get European Conference League football um, is, is, is the aim of the game. Um, good luck. We'll speak again.